Here I'm going to show you how to record a bond issued at a discount on the balance sheet with its journal entries. Now with a bond we have two cash flows to be concerned with. First would be its face value or principal amount that has to be paid at maturity and then the interest payments on that bond. Usually they're semi-annual payments and they're based on the stated rate of interest on the bond. And then we have its present value or what it's worth here when we issue at it. Now that present value or its worth here uh, is based on discounting the uh, face value or the principal amount back plus those interest payments back at a market rate of interest. And then you get the uh, a present value here of that bond. You compare that to the face value and the present value would be less in case of in less than the face value uh, for a discount and then you have that difference amount here and that's what has to be amortized as an interest expense on that bond over the life of that bond. So let's look at the entries here. We uh, in this case recorded or issued a bond for a hundred thousand dollars so we increase our bonds payable by that amount and we only received cash here its present value of ninety six thousand one hundred and fifty dollars. So we use a discount to bonds payable, which is a contra account to the bonds payable here, and that as our balancing entry here. So we increase that by the difference between the uh, face value and its present value, present value of the bond. In this case, it's 3850, and you can see that adding that to the 96,150 dollars, it balances here with the bonds payable. The debits uh, equal the credits, and you and here just we've got the hundred thousand dollar bond less that discount this is the contra account gives you the ninety six thousand one hundred fifty dollars so what we have to do is amortize this discount over the life of the bond here and what uh, what we have to do is bring it down to uh, its balance here so you got the thirty eight fifty uh, debit balance and then the credits would be thirty eight fifty at the maturity of that bond and you'd have a zero amount here in that discount the bonds payable which would make your bring your bonds payable amount up here to the face value or the hundred thousand dollars then we have to account for those interest payments um, based on the uh, stated rate of interest on the bond and then finally we have this interest expense here as part of net income that's recognized as an expense for that bond. And that's based on the market rate of interest times the bond's carrying value at, the, at each of those payment dates. So this discount here becomes a balancing account for the bonds payable, the cash, and it also become a balancing account for this interest payable and the uh, interest expense. So now we'll go in and look at how we calculate the discount and those interest expenses. Okay, here I'm going to show you how to calculate the interest expense and other entries for those for the journal entries on that bonds payable. So we started out here with $100,000 uh, bonds payable amount, the face amount or the principal amount, and then its present value here, what we've received for that bonds payable was $96,150. So we determined that the discount or that balancing entry here would be $3,851. That would be the difference between the bonds payable and its book value. Now we go over here and we calculate the interest payments. Now this would be that stated rate of interest. In this case it was a hundred thousand dollar bond and we had a nine percent uh, uh, stated rate of interest on it. So either we take the four and a half percent times the hundred thousand dollars for the semi-annual payments or we take nine um, four and a half percent times a hundred thousand dollars here and we get forty five hundred dollars worth of interest payments those are the, those steady stream that annuity due on that bond now we go over here and we have to recognize that interest expense on our income statement so that's based on uh, the market rate of interest times the carrying value of the bond here so that we're able to do for each period and then there's this amortization amount here this is how we amortize the interest expense so that is really the difference here between the interest payment and the interest expense that we recognize each period now yeah that would in this case was 4500 minus 4807 for the first uh, period here gives us a 307 dollar amortization amount now you reduce your balance in your bond discount by that $307 amount here. And by doing that, 
by reducing this bond discount, it actually increases the book value here. So our book value increases by the amount of this discount here, and our discount amount decreases by that book value, just going through the mechanics here where you have, in this case, the first period, end of the first period, we had this $100,000 in bonds payable, and it was reduced by this discount amount here, which was reduced again by that amortization amount, leaving, increasing our bond uh, book value on that bond. Now, we just continue on with those calculations until we get down to the uh, uh, payment date on that bond. Now, again, just reviewing our journal entries here, we got this interest payable amount here, and uh, that's that stated rate of interest, those steady payments. Then we got the interest expense that we recognize on our income statement, and that's based on the uh, stated rate of interest times the carrying value of the uh, bond for each period. And then this discount payable, that was uh, calculated here based on uh, subtracting our, our interest expense from our interest payable, and that was a balancing entry here. And then that discount payable uh, reduces the, uh, or increases the book value of the bond. Now if we look here um, for our cash account, we started out here with the present value of the bond, but we had to pay out those steady interest payments at the stated rate of interest. Plus, when the bond became mature, we had to pay for that. And then that bond's payable at maturity here would re be reduced by $100,000. So again, looking back here on this discount the bond's payable, that's calculated based on subtracting your interest expense from your interest payable. And again, this interest expense here is based on the carrying value of the bond uh, times the uh, uh, the interest this the market interest rate on that bond. So by the time everything gets calculated here, or at, at the end of the a period when that bond becomes mature, our discount here would be reduced. Well, a 38.86 would be. Uh, 30, the close amount here, 3886, would reduce this 3850 in the discount to bonds payable down to zero. So that would be our journal entries here for recording a bond issued at a discount.